Hi everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we're going to go through a brief overview of light dispersion. Light dispersion is a topic in the IGCSE syllabus. In this video, we're going to go through briefly the concept of light dispersion by a prism, the spectrum of visible light colors, as well as the concept of monochromatic light. Now, first things first, what is light dispersion? Light dispersion is the separation of white light into different colors. This concept is commonly associated with the activity or the observation of how when white light shines through a glass prism, it separates out into the rainbow colors. Now, why does white light do this? Why does white light separate into those different colors? You must understand, first of all, that in physics, we don't recognize white or black as colors. In physics, when we say color, we're referring to the colors, uh, the individual colors in the rainbow. For example, blue or green or orange or red. So those individual colors are recognized as colors. White and black are not recognized as colors. Why is this so? Now, if you have learned about the color wheel in physics before, you would probably understand why. So what is this color wheel? So let's say you have a, a wheel made up of, uh, you know, putting different colors on different spokes. And if you spin it really quickly, you should be able to observe um, how all of them seem to merge together to form a single color. This is not exactly a good representation because it's not spinning fast enough. I'm just showing you this because it looks so pretty. Now, a better way of observing this is actually by making Newton's disk, which is made up of uh, cardboard, which has been colored into uh, different sections of colors, like this. So you can see that, uh, this guy over here, he's holding a cardboard wheel that has been colored, um, you know, different segments with different colors, and he's just spinning them, spinning the wheel really, really quickly. And if you observe how the colors seem to merge, it seems to form white color. There's no white color on this cardboard. They're actually colored differently, you know, with different colors in different segments, but you spin it quick enough, it looks white. Thank you to Kids Fun Science for this video. And if you'd like to know how to make this color wheel, do check out uh, his video on YouTube. Uh, this video is a tutorial also, which shows you how to make this color wheel. But you can see from here, this is an excellent uh, demonstration on how the combination of all these different colors seem to form white light. And that's exactly what white light is. White light is a combination of all these different colors merged together. That's why white is not recognized as a color in physics. Black, on the other hand, is the absence of all these colors. That's why black is also not recognized as a color in physics. So this is a simple um, color chart to show the relationship between the different colors. If you've learned about light colors before, then you would know that the three primary colors are red, green, and blue. The secondary colors are yellow, cyan, and magenta. And the combination of all these colors will produce white light. If you have not learned about this, you know, uh, primary and secondary colors in light before, do wait. I will produce a video that explains this in more detail. In the meantime, though, let's move on with light dispersion. So what happens when we shine white light through a glass prism? So due to refraction, what you'll find is that the white light will separate out into the different colors of the rainbow. I'll explain in a short while why this dispersion happens. But before we get to that, first of all, you must remember the sequence of the colors in the rainbow. So if you have your own method, please use it. But the method that uh, I'd like to share that I use is a very simple one. I just use the Roy G. Biff method. Literally, Roy G. Biff. What is Roy G. Biff? It is essentially the colors of the rainbow in order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So if you haven't memorized it yet, you've got to memorize it. You've got to know the colors in sequence. What makes these colors different from one another? Well, besides the obvious fact that the colors are different, what also makes them different 
are actually the frequencies and wavelengths. So you can see on this color chart over here on the left hand side, we have the red color, which starts with sorry, which starts from 480 terahertz and about 635 nanometers frequency and wavelengths respectively. And as you move across to violet, you can see that the frequency increases while the wavelength decreases. On the side of violet, you have a greater frequency of 750 terahertz and 400 nanometers wavelength. THZ, by the way, is terahertz and NM is nanometers. So if you're trying to remember this relationship, like how do you remember it? So it's really quite simple. This doesn't explain why they have different frequencies and wavelength, but it helps you remember the relationship. You got to recall the wave equation, which is V equals F lambda, where V is the wave speed, F is the frequency, and lambda is the wavelength. Now, you should know this, right? All light colors, that means all the colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, all of them travel at the same speed in vacuum at 300,000 kilometers per second, or as more commonly said, 3 times 10 power of 8 meters per second. Now, because all of them travel at the same speed, so it means V is the same, if the frequency increases, lambda decreases, which means the greater the frequency, the lower the wavelength. So as you can see in the color spectrum as well, moving from red to violet, greater frequency, lower wavelength. So this helps you remember that relationship between frequency and wavelength. Now that we know that, all right, um, these different colors have different frequencies and wavelength, then it will be easier for you to understand the concept of monochromatic light. Monochromatic light is very simple, right? The term mono means one and chrome means color. Monochromatic light is essentially light with one color. Physics specifically, you have to express it using physical quantity. So monochromatic light is a light with a single frequency or wavelength. That means if you have a monochromatic light source, for example, you have a torch light, if it's a monochromatic light source, it means that it will only shine light of one frequency only or one wavelength only. So for example, if this light frequency is 480 terahertz, that means it's actually shining red light only. If you have a light source that shines a light with 610 terahertz, or 490 nanometers, that means it's only shining green light. So that's what monochromatic light means. Therefore, white is not monochromatic. Why? Because white is the combination of all these colors, right? So it's shining all these multiple frequencies. It is not a single frequency only. So white light is not a monochromatic light source. Now that we know, okay, these different colors have different frequencies and different wavelengths. But why this, why, why, why does white light separate into those different colors when it gets into the glass prism? So looking back at this diagram, so you can see over here, okay, red lights on top and violet, violet lights at the bottom. So not only do, must you memorize the order of the colors, you must also know the position. So red on top, violet at the bottom. So the reason why light separates it like separates into these different colors when it reaches the glass prism is this. As we already know, all these light colors would travel at the same speed in vacuum. Now, light does travel at slightly lower speeds in air, but in IGCSE, we'll just assume the number to be the same in vacuum because the difference is negligible. So if you recall, the term negligible means can be ignored. So let us assume for now that light travels at the same speed in air as it does in vacuum. Well, regardless, when light travels in air, they, they still all travel at the same speed. So on the left-hand side of the prism over here, we've got white light. It appears white because all the colors are traveling together, together. And because they're all moving together, all these red, orange, yellow, green, violet, they're all traveling together. That's why it looks white. But when it hits the prism, the glass prism, what happens is refraction occurs. Now, if you can't remember refraction, go check out my video on light refraction, which explains it in a little bit more detail. For now, let's just remember, okay, light undergoes refraction. But because different light colors have different frequencies and different wavelengths, what happens is that they will travel at different speeds inside the glass prism. So red travels at a higher speed 
than all the other colors, violet travels at the slowest speed. So which means that the rainbow spectrum that we have here, they all travel at different speeds within the glass prism. So red travels the fastest and violet travels the slowest. Because red travels the fastest, it has the smallest deviation of uh, direction. That means the refraction is a little bit less. So while it does refract towards normal, the angle change is not very significant compared to the others. Violet, because it travels with the slowest speed, it will change direction the most. That means it will refract the most towards normal. So now I know in this diagram, the violet looks blue and that's because the particular drawing app I used didn't have the violet color. So bear with me. I know it's, it's red and blue. We just label here red and violet for your understanding. There's of course all the other colors in between, right? Like here in this diagram, I've only drawn the topmost and the bottommost of red and violet. So that's why there is the separation of colors with red having the smallest deviation and violet has the greatest deviation towards the normal. And that's why the color separates. Now, because of the shape of the prism, which is triangular, then when, it, when the light rays hit the other side of the prism back into air, they will then refract away from normal. So you can see in the diagram on the right hand side here, we have the respective normal light sorry, respective normal lines for the red and violet light rays. And you can see that they have uh, individually refracted away from normal. And that further emphasizes the changes in direction. So if you put a piece of paper on the other end, so that black line over there represents, let's say, a piece of paper or a cardboard. So you'll find that the separation is very clear with red on top and then all the other colors in between and then violet at the bottom. So that's why you'll see this separation and this is explained because um due to, you know this is explained with the concept of refraction where because all the colors move at different speeds inside glass so they refract at different angles and that explains why the light disperses the way it does so i hope that uh, you found this video educational and helpful so uh don't forget to click like and subscribe for more educational videos by your physics teacher Miss Ho. Happy studying!